and the founder of DrAx.com. In this video, I'm gonna be training you on the many benefits of intermittent fasting, what to do and what not to do, and who should do it when it comes to intermittent fasting, and also some of the key foods you're gonna to wanna to be eating if you're gonna be following intermittent fasting type of diet. So let's jump right in. And let me say this, intermittent fasting, you know, the benefits can be pretty profound. And what tends to happen uh, when you look at what it is and how to do it, first off, when you look at intermittent fasting, um, you want to typically eat between a four hour to a maximum eight hour window, but typically that window is about six hours. Now, most people eat first thing when they wake up in the morning, so maybe that's seven o'clock, and then also we'll eat a snack or something even up till the time of bed, maybe that's you know 11 o'clock. So what ends up happening is most people end up eating for about 16 hours a day or at least 12, and so your body's kind of always digesting, always processing, and it doesn't have a very long rest period for really cleansing, detoxification for internal healing. So we'll talk about that more in just a minute. But one of the big benefits is you have a much longer period where you're not eating so your body can recover and heal. Now, here's one of the biggest benefits of intermittent fasting. It promotes human growth hormone. You know, there was an article written years ago about Herschel Walker, a famous Georgia running back and also was a, a very uh, prosperous NFL running back. In fact, broke the rookie uh, uh, running record in terms of uh, yards per carry, but um, it promotes HGH, that's human growth hormone. You know, most people today, um, as we age, your human growth hormone declines, and this is what you'll see. A lot of men with low testosterone have low human growth hormone. When women start to um, age faster, get brittle bones, their human growth hormones lower. Naturally, having more human growth hormone tends to mean you're younger, you're more vibrant, you're more energetic. But again, if it's low, that starts leaning towards sickness and disease. Now, some people as they age will start to try and do testosterone injections and other things that are synthetic. The problem is those outside in things that are unnatural also have serious side effects versus ideally you wanna boost the human growth hormone in your own body and keep it high. One of the best ways to do that intermittent fasting. You know, it also, if you are working out on an empty stomach, first thing in the morning, boost your human growth hormone by sometimes more than a thousand percent, can go sky high. So again, one of the biggest ways you can actually increase human growth hormone is by intermittent fasting and coupling it with heavy weight training. It's a great way to stay younger longer. Number two, as we've talked about anti-aging, so much of aging is sort of balancing hormones in your body as you age from human growth hormone to cortisol levels to insulin. We wanna keep your cortisol levels balanced. Really one of the keys to doing that is intermittent fasting. So in, in an intermittent fasting diet, you know, most people might have their first meal at one o'clock you know, maybe they'll do two meals a day. They'll eat at one o'clock and around five or six, and that's what they do. They're, you're always skipping breakfast when you're intermittent fasting. Some people eat at noon, three, and six. That's another option if you still want to get three meals in. But in general, with intermittent fasting, is you're waiting to eat, and it's really eating possibly more like our ancestors did. You know, our ancestors, we don't know that they necessarily had ate something every morning, and then they might have gone out and worked for a while, and then when they started getting hungry, then they would eat, they were really listening to their body. But again, intermittent fasting can promote anti-aging because of how it balances out cortisol, human growth hormone, insulin, and other hormones that really affect aging. Number three, improve sports performance. You know, a lot of this has to do with, again, HGH. You know, the best athletes are faster and they are stronger Stronger has a lot to do with that human growth hormone, which a lot of people try and cheat the system and do ster anabolic steroids. Here's the truth is you can boost your own internal natural steroids and your own uh, anabolic system if you follow intermittent fasting and especially if you couple that with weightlifting and burst training or high intensity training, doing those things together really helps boost that human growth hormone, which will boost your strength and help sports performance. Number four, normalizes insulin sensitivity. Now this is huge. You know, people with diabetes, we know that they have insulin spikes. We know that they are having issues with their insulin receptor sites 
with diabetes. So obviously this helps that, but a lot of people don't also realize that insulin has a lot to do with weight gain. Also insulin has, to lot to do, has a lot to do with other hormones being balanced in the body like progesterone and estrogen. And oftentimes what happens if insulin stays in balance, progesterone gets low, estrogen gets high, that can lead to issues like infertility in women. It can lead to PCOS, it's polycystic ovary syndrome, severe PMS symptoms. A number of hormonal health conditions are related to insulin imbalance. So again, insulin, your energy levels all day should kind of be like this, okay? They should just be high, they should be feeling good. What happens to a lot of people, we eat these carby breakfasts, which your body can deal with because you fasted for eight hours. But then for lunch, we do a lot more carbs. So what happens is you hit that like two or three o'clock coma. You want to go into a nap. You know, that's what happens when you have insulin levels that aren't balanced. So ideally what you do is you miss breakfast and then you're eating a diet that's high in protein, fiber, healthy fat, and other antioxidants, okay? So again, notice I didn't say carbs in there. You want to keep insulin levels balanced do intermittent fasting and follow a diet that has protein, fiber, healthy fat, some other antioxidants in it. And that's what's gonna keep you really level and energized all day long and help normalize insulin sensitivity. Number five, it helps regulate hormones in your body like leptin and ghrelin. Now ghrelin is known as your body's hunger hormone. So maybe you've been in that position where you are just hungry or famished, and your body says, I need more food. Well, when you start intermittent fasting, you might have that for about three days, but after a three days, that starts to go away. And when you do intermittent fasting the right way and eating foods that are high in fat, protein, and fiber, like, you know, an example of a meal would be for breakfast, you know, doing a smoothie, doing bone broth protein with some coconut milk, with maybe a little bit of fiber like a chia seed or flax seed. You can even do a few berries in there, I'm sorry. And by the way, your breakfast is at noon, okay? And then at three o'clock, maybe you're eating another meal, uh, you know, uh, you're at three o'clock lunch, and you're doing a, um, you know, like a, like a big salad with lettuce and chicken breast and olive oil and that type of thing. And for dinner, organic meat, like triple dose of vegetables, some more healthy fat like an avocado, that's the ideal meal plan. If you eat meals like that at like three, you know, noon, three, and six, it's gonna help kill off that hunger hormone or balance that out. And also there's another hormone that helps intermittent fasting helps balance out called leptin. And leptin is really released by some of your fat cells. And it's really what tells your body that you need to burn fat or to store fat uh, more fat in your system. So again, intermittent fasting can also help in a major way with balancing out those horm hormones that cause cravings. Also, it can lower triglycerides. You know, it's interesting, there's this debate between the holistic natural health community and the medical community, and the medical community saying cholesterol is what causes heart disease. Really, it's not cholesterol. Um, it's, it's high cholesterol. Uh, LDL cholesterol and low HDL cholesterol. But one of the things you wanna do look at with your heart health is overall triglycerides. We know triglycerides, when those get high, those can actually increase your likelihood of having clogged arteries and a heart attack or stroke. So what we wanna do is balance out those triglyceride levels. You lower triglycerides by consuming a lot of herbs, okay? Things like cinnamon and ginger and turmeric and also by intermittent fasting. Doing those things together is gonna to help bring those triglyceride levels back into balance. Number seven here, detoxification. This is probably one of the greatest benefits of intermittent fasting. So think about this. When you wake up and eat first thing in the morning, let's say it's 7 a.m., and you eat another little snack at eight or nine, you know, your body's only getting about maybe 10 hour, eight to 10 hours of rest while you sleep at night. If you eat a meal, let's say at one and your next meal at uh, you know, six, well, your body's digesting for about five hours there, or maybe let's say six even, well, your body's having an extra eight hours, let's say 18 hours for your liver to detox, for your colon to cleanse, for your lungs to filter, for your kidneys to balance out these fluids in your system. It's giving your body more time to not have to work. Here's, here's the thing, your body, this is a really important thing to remember. Foods don't heal you. Your body heals itself. Your liver detoxes. So milk thistle or turmeric or beets or 
None of those things actually heal you. They support your organ and functioning. Your liver detoxes, your body heals itself. So an important thing to remember is the best thing you can do for your body is practice fasting and really resting your body. This is why fasting itself has been practiced for thousands of years. If re it's referenced throughout the Bible for fasting, for spiritual insights and for overall health. It's referenced in Chinese medicine fasting, Ayurvedic medicine. So we know that fasting was recommended by Hippocrates and Galen, the fathers of Western medicine. So we know there are many benefits of fasting. One of the biggest reasons is it supports detoxification of your organs. Number eight here, weight loss. Probably the, one of the biggest reasons people will use it is when you're intermittent fasting, again, you're experiencing the benefits of killing off your hunger hormones, balancing out insulin levels, having more anti-aging hormones, detoxification, all of these things benefit weight loss. And also when people tend to eat less meals or closer meals together, they tend to eat less calories. Overall, it supports weight loss in a major way. And also doing this combination of a diet where you mix an intermittent fasting with a ketogenic diet for 30 days, marrying those two diets together is the fastest way to burn fat and lose weight you could ever imagine. That's a combination of a ketogenic diet plus intermittent fasting for about a 30 to 90 day period really leads to rap rapid weight loss. So who should do it? Anybody who's looking for these benefits, if you want to experience the benefits of intermittent fasting, again, if you're a person who wants to lose weight, you want to balance insulin levels, you want to balance hormones, you want to age slower, you want to get rid of brain fog for a lot of people, you want to support detoxification, that's who should do it. People that shouldn't do it are uh, potentially uh, women that are pregnant. Um, you know, you want to just make sure that you're eating when hungry, that you're listening to your body during pregnancy, of course, and anybody where uh, it's been contraindicated. You know, if you have diabetes, you want to work with a practitioner on, practitioner on this to make sure at least you're getting some food so you're not having these spikes. But over time, most people with diabetes can start to see that reverse by practicing that diet that I talked about, fiber, fat, protein, get rid of the sugar and carbs, Consuming a diet like that with intermittent fasting over time can really help with those insulin levels and, and, and uh, blood sugar levels. And then how to do it. Ideally with intermittent fasting, I kind of went through this earlier. Again, you want to start eating your first meal around noon or one, last meal around five or six. I typically recommend like a six hour window of when you can eat, okay? And, that's, and then the rest of the day you don't eat. Now you can drink fluids during that time, get plenty of water. But that's really what you want to do on an intermittent fasting diet is not eat during those six hours. And remember, when you're doing intermittent fasting, eat a diet that's high in protein, fiber, healthy fat, and lots of nutrients from herbs. When I say herbs, you know, throwing turmeric in with your chicken or with your hummus or something like that that you're eating. You know, using, if you're making an Italian chicken dish, lots of basil, lots of oregano, lots of rosemary. You know, if you're making a smoothie, a big teaspoon of cinnamon in there. You know, using lots of herbs, lots of vegetables as well on this diet is something you absolutely want to do as well. And again, you can see all of these benefits here. So, hey, if you want to experience the benefits of intermittent fasting, you know, go ahead and I, I would just simply uh, just, just know that there's really nothing complex about it. You're eating less uh, during a six-hour window during the day. It's really that simple to following the diet. And, hey, the first three days, you start to have a lot of those cravings. But listen, after a few days, you don't even get hungry in the morning, and you won't even be hungry till lunch. So, again, try it out an intermittent fasting diet. I know you're going to see benefits. And, hey, if you've enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe here to my YouTube channel. And, hey, we've got a lot of great content coming out about essential oils other uh, advanced diets like the ketogenic diet and really just teaching you how to use food as medicine. Hope you've enjoyed this video.